Take a look at the first shot of the good, the bad, and the ugly. I love this shot. We fade in on an establishing shot of a ragged hillside out somewhere in the mythic west. Out here it looks like everything's far away, but then Sergio Leone, the director, plays a trick on us. As the cowboy leans into frame, the extreme long shot abruptly and surprisingly turns into an extreme close-up. We thought for a moment that we were totally alone, but it turns out that the frame line hid something that was only inches away from us. Now this sort of thing actually happens throughout The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and not just to the audience, but to the characters too. In this scene, Blondie and Tuco, thinking that they're alone in the wilderness, stumble right into the middle of a Civil War encampment with thousands of men in it. Surely they should have heard the din of all those soldiers, but because it was beyond the edge of the frame, they failed to detect what was right in front of them. For me, this encapsulates the way that most people watch movies. Because they're only looking for the story, they miss the film. And as popular films go, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly provides a great example of the range of things that film can express besides a story. In fact, I'd say that The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly makes a compelling case that film might be at its best when it's telling no story at all. So I'd like to show you one scene in particular, take it apart, and demonstrate how Leona uses editing and music to turn two and a half minutes of just standing around into some of the best cinema ever made. The famous scene in question is often called the trio, and it comes near the end of the film. For over two hours of film leading up to this point, Blondie, Angel Eyes, and Tuco, also known as the good, the bad, and the ugly, have been chasing each other over, under, around, and through Sergio Leone's fantasy land reimagining of the Wild West during the American Civil War, making and breaking alliances, backstabbing, and guns blazing their way through the rather ridiculous plot. And it all comes down to this. At the center of a massive Civil War cemetery, they'll have to gun each other down for the grand prize, a big pile of gold buried in one of the graves. They take their positions in the three-way standoff, and then, for two and a half glorious minutes, they wait, and nothing at all seems to happen. In terms of plot, you might be justified in calling this scene pure excess, but whatever this moment may lack in narrative content, it abundantly makes up for in the creative exploration of form. Take a look.
killed. When did you unload it? Last night. You see, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. Those with loaded guns, and those who dig. You dig. Where? I let that clip play a little long just so that you could find out about Tuco's gun. But for the purposes of this video, let's just consider the two and a half minutes of film between this shot and this shot. Certainly the whole thing could have played in this extreme long master shot, but thankfully Leone decided to fill in the gap with one of cinema's more thrilling visual cadenzas. And the best part of it all is that it's not just empty flourish. This scene has a total of 65 shots, and each one of them serves a purpose. Leone uses the time and the tension he's built up in the story thus far to explore at least three different interlocking ideas. Editing as mathematical pattern, editing as a way to express thought, and editing as pure musical rhythm. So let's begin at the beginning. After two establishing shots, Leone rigorously re-establishes the characters and their position in the scene by working out a basic mathematical pattern. The scene features three characters, and every shot will be a shot of one of them. So let me ask you, how many different ways can three objects be arranged in a row? Or put another way, how many permutations are there of three objects? For the sake of simplicity, let's just call the characters good, bad, and ugly from now on. So let me ask, in how many different orders can their initials G, B, and U be arranged? Well, one arrangement is G, B, U. If we swap the positions of the last two letters, we get another G, U, B. If we change the starting letter, we can make two more pairs for a total of six. With that in mind, watch what Leone does in this scene. We begin with three waist-level medium shots connected by eyeline matches. The order is ugly, then bad, then good. Quick note, an eyeline match is whenever an editor cuts from a character looking to what they're looking at. In the rest of this scene, pay attention to where each character is looking, because those eyelines will help to communicate the relationship between the characters. Next, we see three over-the-shoulder shots which re-establish the scene's spatial relationship. Good looks at ugly, ugly looks to bad, and bad looks at good. Then, we see each man's weapon in close-up, B, G, and you. By the way, by this point, the natural sounds of those birds cawing in the background have disappeared under Morricone's music. Then we get three medium close-ups, U, G, B, also following eyeline matches, and then three tight close-ups, G, B, and U. Having explored five of the six permutations of these three figures, Leone inserts a kind of punctuation shot before moving on to a new pattern in the editing. So let's take a look at that new pattern. Over the next 25 shots, he will use editing to both foreshadow and to give us insight into what the characters are thinking. But first, he overlaps and finishes off the old pattern, showing us the sixth and final arrangement of those three characters, B, U, and G. Over these 25 shots, Leone guides us to understand what his characters are thinking, not just by showing us their muted expressions, but by arranging them in a certain meaningful way. To show you what I mean, let's begin by counting the number of shots which each character receives. Good and his gun get 7 out of the 25 shots. Now, having seen the scene already, we know that he already knows how this will end. He doesn't have to worry about Ugly because he personally unloaded his gun. However, Good also needs to make sure that Bad doesn't shoot Ugly. Because Ugly doesn't know any of this, he's panicking and unable to settle on a strategy. His eyes are shifting restlessly back and forth. He and his gun also get 7 out of the 25 shots, as if setting him up as equal with Good. And Bad, as we all realize, is facing a crisis. He and his gun get the clear plurality of shots, 11 out of 25, as he tries to figure out who to shoot. He gets more shots than the others because his conflict is most significant. As he comes to terms with Good and Ugly's unspoken alliance, he realizes that the decision to draw first is his to make, and therefore the standoff is his to lose. Accordingly, we see more close-ups of his hand reaching for his weapon than we do for anyone else. One more thing. Notice the way that Leone uses editing to link the good and the ugly together. They each only get seven shots, but in four cases, a close-up of ugly's face follows a close-up of good. If you take a look at each of these pairings, you'll notice that each time, Leone brings their eyelines closer and closer to meeting. By the end of this series of 25 shots, they're looking directly at each other. 
It's as though the eyeline matches aligning the characters are the equivalent of good telling ugly, don't worry, I've got your back for the moment we're on the same side. Also notice that the camera is placed almost directly on top of the axis of action drawn between good and ugly, so that when their eye lines meet, they seem to be looking straight ahead at the camera. Bad, on the other hand, is caught between them, and he has to look back and forth, which enhances and reinforces his nervousness. All in all, I'd say that this scene comes about as close as editing can to giving us a picture of what a character is thinking about. Then, along with the music, the editing gets slightly faster. The next seven shots move us into extreme close-ups, still emphasizing the eye line between good and ugly, and still emphasizing Bad's hand about to go for his weapon. And then we get nine more shots, much faster. We see Bad's gun again, and a repeat of the same extreme close-ups as before. At this point, the editing has transcended space and thought and moved into the realm of pure rhythm. With the cuts coming faster and faster and the music blazing away, we've reached an apotheosis of pure rhythm and the necessary climax of the scene. The only way for it to end is for someone to fire, and so that's what happens. Six shots bring it all to a close. We see Bad's head moving and drawing his gun in extreme close-up. Then we see Ugly's head moving and him drawing his gun in close-up. Then we see Good beating them all. He only needs one shot. He fires in medium shot. And then we see the result of this three-way standoff all the way out in extreme long shot. In these last six shots, the editing pace immediately decelerates, and simultaneously the camera distance, which has gotten closer and closer throughout the scene, pulls back out to where it was at the beginning, creating a perfect bookend. To close, I'd just like to remark that editing is the art of creating relationships between shots. Most frequently, these relationships are spatial and temporal, which is to say that most cuts in narrative cinema establish the layout of the space where the action takes place, and they also give an impression of the flow of time. Indeed, during the trio from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, the eyeline matches between the characters continually reestablish the layout of the space, while the sheer accumulation of shots gives us a sense of the flow of time. But as we've seen, that's not it. Editing can also, in this instance, create mathematical sets, generate images of thought, and even aspire to the rhythm of music. And so I ask you, what else can editing do? As with all aesthetic questions about film, we can never really know for sure what else will be until artists discover it. Thank you very much.